Another quick update for how my 1.8 build is going. So I've, I've sort of gone dark for a little while just because I'm moving to electronics and there's a lot of bits where I'm like, all right, I don't want anyone to mess this up. It's all right if you mess up your belt routing and that kind of thing, but if you mess up your electronics, you're probably going to hurt yourself. But some steps and learnings from what I've done so far. So I'll do a whack around the machine first so you can see what I'm up to. <coughs> the rear enclosure has been... um taken off at the moment just so I've got easier access to stuff and I've learned a lot about routing and making things easy to do which is nice. Um, so we have things like um, the stepper motors, I have, um, oh, geez there's a lot of force, I need to take that out. Stepper motors I've um, sleeved up knowing that the rear enclosure will cover most of that which is nice and I'll trim these down. So the SKR 1.3 board will work with these, but you can also get some JSD XH connectors so they're not reversible and so you can't plug them in the wrong way. Um, it's just a nice to have kind of thing. So anyway, um, that was the first cable braid I've ever done, that one there. And then I got a bit better by the time I got to um, this one, I think. So it's much nicer. What I've also learned is that the CAD has these bits stepping out, which looks like it's possible until you realise that the skirts are going to go here, so it's not possible at all. What you should be doing is put your motors facing backwards or on the inside, and you should be fine. I think um, yeah, inside would definitely be okay, like going that way. And that means you've got more room for them to go into your rear enclosure there. Um, what else have I done? I've started putting the cable belts on. So you can see there, it does the thing. I haven't figured out the exact length for these to go. I've also done, made sure the end stop switches are there. So if you look at this one, this end stop, the instruction manual says to use 500 millimeters of wire, which is what I've done here. Wire comes down here, so I can go into whatever connection I want there, which will be great. As well as that, um, there was instructions on when you do this one, you have to push the wires in. Okay, cool. So I've done that. Um, that's nice. The other thing here is the afterburner wiring. So this has come a long way, this, this one. Actually, it's not that long. It's just that things have been put together. So we'll put this down, and you can have a look inside. So until you screw down that bit, um, this all comes apart pretty nicely. So you can see here, wiring-wise, we've got a uh, red fan, which is the blower that is disassembled. Now these colours are going to be the same if you've used the stock bomb for these bits by the way. So red is your fan. Now polarity wise these will fit in as is without modifications to your SKR board. So remember that because what you can do is make your microfit connectors and at the end you can sort of go back to that if you want. Um, this one is for your... Oh, I'm going to get this wrong probably. Where's the other fan on this? Oh, the bottom fan here. So you can confirm that by looking up and you can see red in that. So I know already that red fan is actually for the yep, for the hot end. So I think that is your um, 24 volt, looks like a 40 mil fan. And that closes like that and screws onto that bit, which is nice. This is your blower one that you disassemble. So this one definitely is the blue and green, blue and yellow one, sorry. So in terms of routing wise I have to do, um, fans, um, stepper motors, which is another four ones here. People have recommended that you put your stepper motor outside of the cable routing somehow. And then you've got um, your hot end stuff. So you've got your Femista, which is usually your thin fragile wires, the white ones. And then the heater wires, which are here. Yeah, so this is a maxi watt, which is a similar design to how a E3D should work. That's how that happens. And then, um, so yeah, I'll make um, a microfit connector for that too. Um, the jury's out for how well you're able to route your cables into this bit. I mean, have a look at all. I'll just put it back together now. So fitting this together, whoops, push that bit up. There we go. And this bit too. So I think, look at the guides, they um, push them in. Now if you're not sure how long you should cut these, there is no 
exact guide for how long they should be because everyone's stuff is different. Um, cut longer because it's not the end of the world if they're a little bit long. So you can see here what it looks like. Now there's some little lines here. I don't know if you can see them. I'll turn on the flashlight. Um, you can see these bits here. There are four, I think. Let me go on the other side. Yes, they're definitely four zip ties. If you want to zip tie down your um, your hot end bit, so it looks a bit nicer. Um, yeah. So looking at the filament path, we'll see a satisfying click. Oh, and this one too is for your uh, XN stop. I'll get to that in a moment. So click time. That's nice. So with that released, you should have a clicky path for your um, filament. And when it's down, nice clicky. That won't move. Should be a bit of tension there. Great. All right, switch that off. Um, so yeah, the end stop on the X axis, which is this one here. I had a lot of fun with this one. Um, <laughs> that's in place. That's good. There's a screw there. Um, what went wrong with this was I never wired this up because I didn't know the actual length of the thing I should be doing for it. I just realised this is um, should be a bit higher. You know, I'll move that up later. Um, yeah, because um, I hadn't wired this up and put this in place, I had to take apart this side of the X gantry to um, get access to it. And then after I realised that, I had to fi I find out too, I had to push in the pins for this to actually fit in place. Um, that was a lot of hell. Make sure you do that if you're reading this and looking about how to wire up your 1.8. Um, so I'll go through and look at if there's any other bits um, you ask questions about. So again, cable thing, a uh, bunch of M3s. I think M3 by 6. Go on to that. But um, with this part here, that's on to a T-nut. So you can adjust that till you get the right fit. Um, I'm not going to mention how many cable chains because I don't know exactly what is the right number you should be using yet. Just know that um, oh, it's too slippery to move along on this table. That um, it's uh, fairly natural if you follow it through in its order. All right, that's about it. I love the look of the afterburner here. It looks fantastic. Um, yeah. All right. Have fun. <laughs>